Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And yes, it's time to talk about the famous transition of several chemical engineers to the tech industry. I'm pretty sure that you may have heard either a friend or a classmate wondering whether or not they should change their major from chemical engineering to computer science, or maybe a fellow colleague that's wondering why they didn't select the computer science as their major, or if there is any specific way in which a chemical engineer can make that transition from industry to the tech world. It's definitely a hot topic that may have arise from the pandemic times in which we for sure saw the main difference between a process engineer that has to go to the industry or a computer scientist working from home just coding in a very nice and booming industry. So what we're going to be doing is analyzing the main differences between a process industry or chemical engineering job, traditional job for sure, versus the computer scientist or programmer working in the tech industry. And make no worries guys, there's no judgment, actually all decisions are respected because after all the one in charge of your own future is of course yourself. Now let's get to it. Number one will be that it is way easier to find a job as a recent graduate with the computer science major rather the chemical engineering degree. And this is for sure dependent on a lot of factors or a lot of reasons, but I would say that the most important ones is that the chemical industry is way mature, so there's not a lot of jobs openings. But on the other hand, the tech industry is booming and growing with a lot of needs on people that is skilled in the programming language. Now, number two is quite related to the previous one and is that once that you get a nice paying job in a nice industry or company that you love the most, it is most likely that you're going to encounter a lot of career jumps. Let it be a promotion, or let it be that you're going to encounter much more responsibilities by end of year or, or maybe by the second year. Whereas in chemical engineering, you are most likely going to need to wait maybe two, three, four years before your first promotion in the process industry. Definitely way much more motivating the very first scenario. Now, for sure, the pandemic hit a lot of industries, but I'm pretty sure that if you were working in the process industry or in a very important industry, let it be food, beverages, pharmaceuticals, steel, chemicals, manufacturing, and so on, you had to go to the factory. You had to go to the chemical plant. You had to go to your workplace. Whereas many of the programmers were just laying in-house, working from home in a very relaxed way avoiding traffic, avoiding their commutes, not losing a lot of time in that, and just having to enjoy their work from home. And for good or bad, this is thick in the industry. If you're going to search for a job in the tech industry, it is most likely at least going to offer you one, two, three, or maybe even full remote job. Whereas in process or chemical engineering, it is not likely that you're going to encounter at least one day work from home. And guys, by the way, Check out the comment section, I prepare something for you. It's a PDF summary on the perks and cons for chemical engineering and computer science degree. Now for sure, competition between your peers is something that you're going to encounter a lot in chemical engineering. You're always going to feel in a red ocean in which you need to work against your colleagues in order to achieve that specific job position. But in the tech world, it's kind of the reverse, that there's a lot of job openings that you are not likely to encounter that much of a competition, or at least not compared to that of the chemical engineering world. Now, for sure, the nature of chemical and process engineering requires to be always paying attention to the chemical process, to the manufacturing line, and so on. So vacations, free time is not likely to be 100% free of stress. You always need to be ready to have a call, send some emails, check the process specifications from your hotel in the beach. All these versus the tech world, which is much more flexible. They will allow you to take time. Typically, it will not be that harsh on your free time. You will be relaxed at home and then wait for tomorrow into the first meeting or so. 
Now, this may vary a lot depending on the company, on the industry type, but it is way much likely that you're going to be exploited as a chemical engineer in the industry. You're going to be taking longer hours. Maybe you're going to have to stay on the factory on Saturday or a shutdown in Sunday or something happens in Thanksgiving or in Christmas, you need to be there. In the other hand, as a tech guy, you're not likely to encounter that or if that happens, at least you're going to have to deal with that in your laptop or computer. Guys, we all know that the chemical industry or manufacturing world is definitely a mature industry, meaning that they are expected to grow at normal growth rates. Let it be three to four, even 5% will be something very huge, pretty similar to the economics of your country or region. But on the other hand, the tech industry is growing at way bigger rates. Let it be 8%, 10%, maybe even 15%, which is great, meaning that this is a booming industry. Hence, a lot of job opportunities and a lot of money running towards those industries. One of the things that I have analyzed whenever I see this type of discussions between chemical engineers and computer scientists or people that switch to tech, it seems to be that it is way easier to focus in a specific niche application in the tech world. For instance, if you are working with AI, you can work towards a certain type of certification that's going to be focusing towards generative AI, or maybe if you're into data points or data analysis, you can do so. Not only that, you can be focusing your attention towards Amazon Web Services. You may be focusing towards Azure, which is the Microsoft equivalent of Amazon Web Services. And the main idea is that just you can focus your attention into these specific niche applications. Whereas in chemical engineering, it will be really hard to focus your attention, for instance, into a distillation column. And in the other hand, maybe to a gas absorption technology or a separation technology, maybe you're talking about membranes. It is not that easy to make a focus because in reality the job market is not likely to appreciate or to value that specific niche application in chemical and process industries. Another thing that I see a lot between this type of discussions is that as a computer scientist you can create stuff. Let it be a project, let it be an application, let it be a consultant agency or so, which is one of the best ways that you can go into the entrepreneurial world. In the other hand, as a chemical engineer, we know that it's not likely that you're going to be able to build actual stuff. You need to have a lot of investment, a lot of know-how, and also a lot of contacts. So it's very hard to make that type of transition. Another aspect that I have heard from computer scientists is that it is one of the best jobs for introverts. And remember, there's a lot of introverts in the engineering world, meaning that you don't need to interact with a lot of people. You just need to be coding in your laptop, maybe in an office, by yourself, sometimes some interactions, some meetings or so, but that will be it. In the other hand, as a chemical engineer, you need to go and work with people that is working in the operation room, in the control room, with some fellow colleagues, some clients. Maybe sometimes you need to be working with the marketing team. Sometimes you need to be working with the management team, operations, utilities, and so on. Definitely, you gotta love working with people. And finally, guys, let us focus our attention in the booming topics that you may hear from computer science and the chemical industry. We're going to be talking about artificial intelligence. We're going to be talking about big data, data sciences. We're also going to be talking about the internet of things, the internet of industry. We may be talking about robotics, augmented reality, virtual reality. We may be talking about cloud systems, network systems, and much more. These are for sure great topics whenever we talk about them. In the other hand, we have chemical industry and we're talking about carbon sequestration technologies, we're talking about hydrogen technologies, the hydrogen economy, we're talking about going green, environmental sciences, we're also talking about going net zero, we may talk about electrical vehicles, batteries, and so on. So definitely these are different approaches towards similar problems, but the main idea is what are your actual interests? And last but not least, and this is a very important topic, is, is that in the tech world, it is way much more democratized in the meaning that it doesn't care about your age, your sex, gender, or your profile, your background. The important thing is that you actually make the decisions based on your skill set. 
let it be a reunion, they will really take into consideration your input if you are a subject matter expert. In the other hand, in the traditional chemical industry world, you're going to encounter that this is not likely the case. The junior engineer is not likely to be considered in the important hotshot opportunities or decisions. You're going to see a lot of executives working with management, which are always grown up people. Talking about boomers, people which is maybe 50, 60 years old, making the real decisions. And this is definitely something that does not motivate the young engineer. And guys, I know that this may not be quite motivating towards the chemical engineer. And actually you could say that I am biased towards the computer science or the tech world. But I really think it's very important for you guys to take this into consideration whenever making the decision in going into chemical engineering or maybe select in computer science. I'm just here to expose the reality of what other chemical engineers think about the chemical industry, but more importantly, on the transition of the chemical engineer into the tech world. So there you have it, guys. Some very important aspects to consider as a student or a recent graduate, or maybe someone willing to make the transition to the tech world. And if you already made that decision, you are most likely wondering, how does a chemical engineer make the transition to the tech industry? Let me know in the comment section if you want me to cover that topic. For now, I really think that we cover relevant aspects on why chemical engineers are thinking or already making the transition to the tech world. On my behalf, guys, that will be it. I'll see you in the next video. And if you're wondering what is something great about chemical industry jobs versus the tech industry is that of job security guys meaning that it is way much likely that you lose your job or get laid off as a programmer or someone working in the tech industry compared to the traditional mature chemical industry so yeah something great for the chemical engineer